characteristics of trig functions and we're going to do some mixed up word problems. So this video is actually going to be fairly long because I'm going to go through all those word problems on your note taking guide. So make sure you get all these characteristics of trig functions at the beginning and then if you need to you can skip through whatever mixed word problems you need to work through but I've got lots of variety so you can see every type that we've done in this lesson or in this unit. Okay let's first start with our characteristics. Okay, on your note taking guide, which I hope you've gone ahead and printed out, we're going to look at some characteristics. So I want you to take your calculator and I want you to find the sine of 65. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take the sine of 65 and write it in that blank. Let's see, I have get 0 0.9063. So 0 0.9063, we always put four decimal places. Now I want you to find the cosine of 25 and I get 0 0.9063. Okay, so we've got two different ratios coming out to the same value. Well, let's look at why that might be happening. What do you notice about the two angle measures, 65 and 25? What do those add up to? Well, they add up to 90. Hmm, so they are complementary, aren't they? They're complementary. So let's look at another set and see if we see the same pattern. Let's take the sine of 18. So I'm going to take the sine of 18 and I get 0 0.3090, 30, 90. And I'm going to take the cosine of 70, that's a 2. So the cosine of 72. Whoops. I somehow I got off my home screen. Let's go here. Okay, the cosine of 72. And again, I'm getting the same value. I'm getting 0 0.3090. So we can look up at the same pattern. So we can kind of make the deduction that when two angles are complementary, their sines and their cosines have the same ratio and we're going to look at a diagram in a minute as to why that's true. So let's make up a little rule. If the sine of the sine of x would equal to the cosine of what? Well, it's 90 minus that value, right? Because it would be its complement. So whatever the value of x is, if we subtract it from 90, it will be the same as the cosine. So let's, you know, let's make up a number. Let's just say we're taking the sine of 20, okay? So in your calculator, take the sine of 20, and I'm getting 0.34, trying to get it so this light's not shining on there, uh, 20, and then 90 minus 20 would be 70. So the cosine of 70 is also that same value, 0 0.3420. So that is the rule right there, okay? So I'll highlight that and make sure you get that down on your note-taking guide, that that is the rule. Okay, what do you notice about tangents? Now, tangents aren't quite as simple. Well, they do have a relationship within each other, so let me just show you. Okay, the tangent of 25. Okay, the tangent of 25, tan of 25, that is equal to 0 0.4663. 0 0.4663. And the tangent of the complement, so 90 minus 25. Well, 90 minus 25 is what? 65. So I'm going to take the tangent of 65 and I get... 2.1445 2.1445 Now these values aren't the same, are they? But what I can show you is this. If I take this ratio because 25 and 65 adds to 90, if I take one of the ratios and I click this x to the negative 1, that means it's inverse or flip it over, okay? I'm going to take that and flip it over, that last answer, and notice I am getting 
the first answer. So the inverse, these are just inverses of each other, okay? So instead of them being equal, the tangent of a, an angle and the tangent of its complement, they're actually inverses of each other. So the rule for this one is the tangent of x is equal to the inverse of the tangent of its complement. So they're just inverses of each other. So if you have one, you can actually just take the inverse of it by raising it to the negative first power and it will give you its complement. Okay, so that's how tangent works together. So that's the first step.